Well, this is the first in a series of Tales on the Road with the infamous Roy Radin Review. I urge you to look up who Roy Radin was. Uh, Crazy Guggenheim, played by Frank Fontaine, he was one of my favorite TV characters as a little kid, and, and as an adult, really. He appeared in the early 60s on the American Scene magazine, also known as the Jackie Gleason Show. So Crazy would shamble out from the back of the bar when he was summoned forward by Gleason, Gleason playing Joe the bartender, and they'd engage in some banter, and usually the segment ended with Fontaine singing some long-ago classic song with his beautiful bass voice. Uh, here's a sample of, of what that was. Huh? Oh, he's in the back. I'll call him out. Hey, Craig! <laughs> hey, Joe. <laughs> oh, Mr. Gary. <laughs> Speaking of superstition, uh, I wonder if it's unlucky to postpone a wedding. And Terrible Temple O'Toole says, of course it's not unlucky to postpone a wedding, as long as you keep on postponing. <laughs> How about singing Dunny and I a little song, huh? seventies, musical conductor Tim Fowler and musician Jack Sally reminisce about being on the road with Frank Fontaine and his ironic death just moments after stepping off stage. Were you out there with, uh, what about, uh, uh, oh, Frankie Fontaine? Oh, were the girls with Frankie Fontaine well, out there? Jack was with Frankie on, I was in Atlantic City when Frankie had the heart attack. Jack was on the bus with him. Oh, yeah? yeah. I used to love him, man. I thought he was funny as heck. Uh, he's a great guy, but you know, again, I mean, he's funny. But I mean, you know, the booze and and the cigarettes. I mean, that was, I mean, that was another thing. You know, you talk about, you know, a, a smoke-free area. Forget that. I mean, uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, him and you know, they'd stay in the back of the bus and and play cards, and and he was hilarious. But but he had to be 450 pounds at that point. Yeah, Frankie was um, a walking death wish. And and really, a, a great, you know, funny guy, man. You know, and and. Uh, uh, it was it was amazing, but I mean, yeah, I think there was one point. I, I, pretty much when he first had his first attack, uh, for whatever reason, I ended up in the back of the bus. I had to go back and get something, and there was like a couple of steps. And and um, I mean, he was so big, they had to call nine one one, and you know, and they 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 would, it took like four guys to try to get him. I, I got pinned behind him because like we couldn't they couldn't get him out. And then you know, he was real sick, and then you know, he tried to come back, and then you know, but I mean, I was pretty, I was with him. When it was like I watched, I watched his eyes go. I said, "Oh Christ, here it comes!" You know, mm. and I, there was one or two other people on the bus at this, but we pretty much emptied out. And whether we were going to the, was at a hotel or whatever, but I mean, it was like it was there. And and, and um, I mean, but them, you trying to get this man was like 450 pounds, and trying to, he had wedged himself in like that first or second seat right on the bus, and it was like they couldn't, you know, it was he, he had all he could do to get into the bus. He just threw the door itself, and then you figure 450 pounds of dead weight, man. He, mm. he, it was it was pretty rough. You know, I mean, I don't know whether he had, I, you know, he was done for the rest of that tour, and I think he tried to come back, but he died relatively shortly. I mean, he wasn't, he didn't go on too much longer after that, did he? I mean, he no, he went to do that, that heart fun thing up in Seattle. Yeah, and, that was in uh, 78. He, because he did. That's where he on, died on stage. He died, yeah, we, we walked off stage, yeah, he died doing it, yeah, so he. Yeah, he did his act, walked off stage, they handed him his check, he walked back out, handed his check to the MC. For the heart fund, said, "Here, I want you guys to have this." Everybody applauded. 
he walked off, and just as he got into the wings, he dropped over, and that was it. Mm. Was it. Well, yeah, he was, you know, so. But, but you he, know, I mean, it was he'd come on the bus. I mean, he was so hungover, he'd come on all disheveled, and he wouldn't say anything. He'd just come on the bus with his cowboy hat and his big dark glasses and his shirt all rumpled up. And he'd well, get on the bus. He'd go into that crazy Guggenheim thing, man, and he would be absolutely... Him doing crazy Guggenheim, there was no... He, he didn't have to do an act on that. I mean, that was him, man. I mean, he was... There was a, there was a whole thing with that. But man. he'd get on the bus, and the first thing in the morning, he was dead quiet on the bus because everybody was hungover and half asleep. And all of a sudden, you'd hear Frankie go, Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> the whole bus would die laughing. And then Georgie Jessel would get on the bus, and Georgie had the, would come on with a glass of milk. And he'd take a shot of bourbon and put it in the milk. And so he started doing the same thing for Frankie every morning. He'd give, you know, Frankie get on the bus, and you hear, oh, shit. <laughs> and then you hear Jessel, ah, oh, Frankie, here, here you go, here you go. And he'd hand him a glass of milk, and everybody's, oh, cool, they're drinking milk. And then we find out Georgie's putting a shot of brandy in it. <laughs> so they're both up there starting to get snocked first thing in the morning. <laughs>